I was on everywhere from Howard Stern to like NPR Emily Rooney. I mean, it was, it was a big story. Well, the photos are gone and now the site owner says that he was pressured by state police. Through history, the Barstool pirate ship has been fortified by the flame of controversy, often from outsiders whose attacks necessitate an equal opposite reaction. You're a liar! Hitler! Hitler! No. Several hundred million dollars? Shut the fuck up! Unfortunately for you, Clay, we met you. You're a loser. I'm so mad about that fucking guy, Jimmy O'Grady. You know what? Just shut up for a second. At times, the friction can even cause internal conflagrations. Just apologize. I know. Yeah. Get out of here. Pirates 2, Stagnetus, Revenge, Triple X. Did you hear about the one where Dave videotaped me in the shower and then put it out on Twitter? And Dan, you're a fucking fat fuck. These controversies have forged Barstool Sports into an indomitable juggernaut, battle-tested and presumably unsinkable. Yeah. You think I like to bitch and moan about that? Are what are you doing here? You know everyone here hates ESPN, right? ESPN needed us more than we need them. All I've heard is fire Neil, fire Neil, fire Neil. I've been in the mud with blindos, hondos, fucking Al Jazeera. I've been in goddamn rap battles. I love watching my enemies go down. I would drive you into <laughs> every parked car imaginable. Shut up, Jenna. I could pick this money up off the ground and buy Deadspin. Until I find that out. Out. Walk away, man. Walk away. She just took a stick and poked maybe the most vicious bear on the internet. Do you understand how offensive that is? No, I obviously don't. But Barstool's buoyancy has been tested. In her adolescence, one moment had Barstool at her greatest risk of capsizing. And that controversy showed just how resilient the pirate ship was. The blogger blinked. Remember the sports website that posted naked pictures of Tom Brady's young child? Well, the photos are gone, and now the site owner says that he was pressured by state police. And yeah, it spiraled out of control. Police showed up at my door. We had this back and forth. They, they were at first like asking me to take the picture down. I was like, no, I'm not gonna take it down. And then it got to the point where it's like, we're gonna fuck with your life. They're like, we're gonna go through like taxes. Every, we can make your life very difficult if you don't take it down. It's like, if you're saying, I'm doing the police department a favor so they can worry about like real issues because their phones they said were blown up about Brady's kid's dick, then I'll take it down. But it was really because they were threatening me. So um, yeah, I took the picture down. And I was on everywhere from Howard Stern to like NPR Emily Rooney. I mean, it was, it was a big story. Blogger post Tom Brady's kid's dick. If nothing else, the week-long controversy has put this website on the map. Blogger David Portnoy backed down, removing controversial photos of Tom Brady's naked two-year-old from the site. Today, he tried explaining himself to shock jock Howard Stern. Dave, d d people said, you must take this down. It's kitty porn. And I saw the picture, and quite frankly, I do think it's kitty porn. I don't think you should put a picture of a two-year-old nude. I thought Stern would have my back, actually, because he's kind of a shock jock. He did not. Uh, he basically called me, I don't think he used the word pedophile, but he may seem like as a scumbag. My issue is I, I legally know I'm within my rights to do it, and I don't really think people should be taking the moral high ground against me. Essentially, back in those days, I just surf like the paparazzi pages a lot. And one of the days there was a picture of Giselle with, was it Ben Brady as like an infant, like a little tiny kid, just huge dick. No other way to put it, he was like an infant, giant dick. Like, oh man, this infant, like the Gerber baby, he's got a fucking hog on him. Portnoy dropped the photo and posted a statement on his site. It took a visit from Massachusetts State Police assigned to the Attorney General's office who said they received complaints. We were investigating what was potentially child exploitation. Um, I've got a long experience in that matter. Our focus is obviously always on the, for the best interest of the child. When asked, he agreed to take it down. I think that was the right result. Um, and, you know, we're always going to take actions that we believe are in the best interest of child safety. The controversial blog about Ben Brady's absolute pipe 
made headlines not only in Boston, but around the country. Portnoy has gained attention, he told Stern. I was torn on it, to be totally honest, because I kind of felt like, in a way, I was selling out by taking it down, but I, I wasn't ready to fight that fight. Well, I was on WEI in the mornings with Dennis and Callahan at the time. DNC, El Prez from Barstool Sports, hanging out for one more segment before we say goodbye to Nestor at about 8.58, 9 o'clock. <laughs> uh, one texture says, uh, hey, Prez, you look like an ultra-gay Tim Tebow. Yeah, you said that in the break. That's the nicest thing anybody has ever said to me. Tim feel, Tebow is a great looking guy. Tim Tebow. Tebow. And it was the afternoon show, Glenn Ordway, that started talking about it. He spent two days basically saying that was a, I was like a pedophile and that I was going to go to jail. This is the end of Arsenal Sports. Jason Wolf was this little midget fuck, was the station manager. They never called me. I just read a press release that I was fired. Never let me defend myself, nothing. Glenn Ordway still lies to this day. Like, oh, I want to call you, they won't let me. Bullshit. They could have had me on the air. Now, now, again, I repeat that we have no say in whether he's on the air or not on the Bullshit. air. Bullshit. Because the reasons I've read from him or seen on a video to this point still make no sense to me. Well, but I now, he obviously believes that he was right. And, and I know well, I was right. It would have been interesting, uh, interesting public conversation, public debate if he had been on the air that day we were I, talking I, about I always think that's the best yeah, way to handle you know, stuff. He could, uh, uh, attempt to defend himself. But they did not. But back then, and still now in radio, the instinct of people in, in upper management, in management, is make it go away, go away, hide, run away from it, which was a stupid, short-sighted, pussy move that wound up backfiring. It was, it was, it, it, we wouldn't do that today. I said, we'll have him on, we'll talk about it, we'll argue, we'll fight, I'll, I'll get, you know, I'll disagree with him. And I said, nope. No, not even could we, not, in, not even did we ban him and not have him on. We couldn't talk about it. We couldn't take calls. Ordway talked about it, but after that, they just put no. the hammer down and said, no more, no Portnoy, no more Howitzer, no more nothing. We had no saying that. We could go back. You had no saying that. That is full, that is dog shit. Talk about having Jason Wolf take the sword for you. You had no comment. It wasn't even an issue till they talked about it. They, they don't think that they can look us, the stoolies, straight in the face and say they had no say on whether I could be on for that particular segment. It wasn't even an issue until then. That is what they're doing right now is called the backpedal. They're swimming back, they're doing the backpedal. What they've done is they said, let's go get El Prez, let's go get the 18 and 35 demo, and now they have totally alienated them. And we're coming, they, they got their things in, they got all the old people who don't know what the internet is, and they got them to pile on me good, and now the stoolies are coming back over the top, and they're scrambling. That's all that was. Glenn Ordway became one of my arch nemesis, that fat fuck, and that midget fuck, uh, Jason Wolf, who's probably like cleaning out gutters in a bowling alley now. I've never, ever missed an opportunity to stick it to those two cocksuckers. I mean, they tried to put me in jail. And the big mistake that Wolf, Jason Wolf, the program director made, was I think he thought he was dealing with some little pissant, ironically. Right, that's true. Some little guy that he thought he can just throw away, and he didn't know that Porno was gonna turn out to be what he is. Uh, we reached out to Glenn Ordway for this, did not respond. Followed up again, he did not respond. It's weird, Minahan and those guys think, thought they could get him to do it, he just, he just went dark. The only time he ever ran into Glenn Ordway, we were at a charity thing for Milton's. We walk in and Ordway's there. And uh, I remember Dave went up to him and for 10 minutes, Ordway just kept trying to like say, oh, it wasn't like that, it wasn't like that. And Dave just fucking teed off on him. He, he did not let him up for air. He just hammered him for 10 minutes straight in this charity setting and everyone from WEI, Sports Hub, Milton's, they're all standing around and everyone's just got eyes on, on Portnoy and, and Ordway just going at it toe to toe. The criticism continued to pour on, but Portnoy remained steadfast in his convictions. The underlying commentary went something like this. Look at the howitzer on that kid. But I looked at it, and that was my gut reaction to the photo. And if I was with my friends, I would have said it, and they would have laughed. Now, that's not right or wrong, but that's generally how we decide what we put. And it's really, in my head, how I've always judged our blog. If it would make me laugh, I post it. It prompted a discussion about a two-year-old that was vulgar. 
I mean, it, it, that's, and, and that's where it went off limits. But the commentary below it was much more about Tom Brady than it was about the kid. I don't think a, a naked baby fuels a fire of it's, it's not sexual. Anybody who would think that, I would say, is more screwed up in the head than I am by now, a mile. When you say it's not sexual, how then would you describe how you describe the little boy's private parts? I mean, what was? Uh, I what? said he had a. I said he had a big, uh, a big howitzer. So that's not sexual. If you if you're making connection to that being sexual, then I would look in the mirror. Is what I would say. Milton's was one of our great advertisers. Um, they stopped advertising. There was a lot of thought, a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, consultation with uh, people that had dealt with um, controversial issues like this. And uh, we spoke with Dave, and um, you guys uh, certainly understood our position. Uh, we, we, we took a, a very brief hiatus, as some of the other advertisers did. Coors Light, and I remember them trying to get me to agree that I wouldn't talk about kids under 12. And I just, I'm like, I can't do that. What if something funny happens? I'm like, I won't mention kids' dicks under 12 anymore. The only guy who publicly defended me was Mike Felger. I wouldn't have published that picture. Uh, I would like to think I wouldn't have published that picture. Should you be fined, sanctioned, arrested? Uh, you know, any, would you please stop with that? If you're gonna be a public person and ask people to consume you as a public person, you've gotta be prepared for all of it. I never said fire Portnoy or end Barstool. I mean, it's just ridiculous. If I ran Barstool, I've told Portnoy this, I would not have run those pictures and joked around about like that. Probably not me. It's easy outrage, right? It's the easiest things to be outraged by that. But I applaud the fact there's a place where you can do it, and I applaud that he had the guts to do it in a way. Nobody else would have done it back then. That was a little much. I, I, I probably, I would not have probably said that. But again, I think him being, you know, Prez being him and saying what's on his mind, whether or not it's right or wrong, but not going through that filter is the charm. And I think to build a site like they have, you're gonna have those tough moments. You're gonna have the moments where you say things that everyone thinks is stupid and you never should have said, but I think that's all together built them to what it is today. So yeah, I mean, I thought that was a little much, but that was the site. It was say what's on your mind. He said it to a lot of people around the country. A howitzer can be defined as a powerful automatic loading artillery cannon used to propel projectiles over relatively high trajectories with a steep angle of descent. Howitzers have been used for centuries, first invented in Sweden in the late 1700s. The onset of trench warfare during World War I significantly increased the demand for howitzers, with the German army housing a multitude of these incredible weapons. There are self-propelled howitzers, pack howitzers, mountain howitzers, and field howitzers among many other howitzers. With all of that being said, was Portnoy truly in the wrong? You are how your name? Oh, I remember that. I remember. I didn't know that's what it was called. Yeah, but he said, he said like, Tom Brady's son was walking the beach with a howitzer. <laughs> 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 like two years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Howitzer, uh, but, yeah. Jesus. They would go right to the edge and then go over it. You know, it was like, you know, you, you do that occasionally. Go right to the edge, you start saying, am I going to dangerous territory here? He would say yes, and he would go even further. Howitzer Gate was, uh, Howitzer Gate was funny. That was a little scary when it was like seeing just how far it went, knowing that we lost advertisers, knowing that like Howard Stern had him on his show but didn't take his side. That was probably the first time I started to get the, the wave of like, oh, the internet's changing here. You can't just do whatever you want, whenever you want anymore. I remember when that picture was posted, I, I like clear as day, and by no means was I like, oh my God, he, you know, he's in trouble. I was, I was actually, I was laughing. I mean, because if you know his sense of humor, it's a joke, talking about a two-year-old with howitzer. But obviously I knew, I'm like, somebody's gonna get rattled at this. A Somerville man, Jesse, was so upset over the nude picture of Tom Brady's two-year-old son on BarstoolSports.com that he has started an internet effort targeting that site's advertisers. The site is boycottbarstools.wordpress.com. My message to the advertisers is, do you know that your money is supporting this? 
And if you do and you, you stand by that, that's fine. He calls the picture and the comments child pornography, but the man who posted the picture tells me he's done nothing illegal. That's when it started being like, all right, well, people, people are just going to come after Barstool no matter what. I mean, granted, I, I probably wouldn't have posted the picture, but I see what he's saying. I mean, it wasn't like it was the end of the world. I've never been embarrassed by what Dave's done. But the one time where I was as close to embarrassed as I could be, or right on the line, was the Howitzer Gate. I knew, I know Dave, so I know what he was trying to do, and I know how we talk. In our circle, That it's just like kind of funny, and it's not, there's nothing malicious about it. He was trying to just be funny, and everyone swings and misses, you know, with, with comedy, and he swung and missed and it was inappropriate and he shouldn't have done it. It was the only time where I, I remember watching on TV as he's going on doing interviews and people were talking about it on local news, being like, oh, really Dave, like you had to do this. I wish he had kind of walked away from that one. That one, um, that was tough. Uh, so I was away at a work, uh, work trip, gone for like about a week while this was all going on, so. I was talking to Dave and like catching up with him at the end of the day because I couldn't really talk during the day and he would tell me what happened. And like I was on his side, like I didn't really see anything that bad with what had happened, but it just got blown so out of proportion. And he kept saying, you don't understand really like how bad this is. You don't really understand. And I was like, well, I mean, I'm sure it will be fine. Like we'll just work through like whatever. And we got home and I think that's when, or I got home and I think that's when the police came. And then I thought, oh, this is actually like serious? Like, are we in trouble right now? Like, what happens from here? Someone stuck a dildo on my door where I lived in Dorchester. And I remember Renee came in the room and threw the dildo on the bed. It's like, are you happy now? And then stormed out. I don't have any problems with what Dave did. Anyone who wants to say that that's child pornography is trying to make it out like we had a photographer in the bushes. No, this, this thing was all over the internet. I probably wouldn't have posted it just because I generally had a no wang policy, but in no way did it set us back. Uh, Wang's a great word, isn't it? You know? And that thing was a howitzer, by the way. Well, I think I just know David so well that it really never bothered me. I know the Brady was a big to-do, and we... I don't think that's a fair statement. It bothered, it bothered you. What do you mean it didn't bother you? It doesn't bother, it never bothered me, but... Well, no, I'm talking about the maybe that particular might have a little bit, but I knew from whence he was coming that it wasn't an intentional, mean thing. But then when it's national and I see my son... Pornographer. <laughs> <laughs> That's nicely said. There are a lot of other names. Controversy kind of like always swirled around and because of Dave's comfort being in a swirling level of controversy, it never made me feel like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. It was just like, oh, here we go again. Like another trip like around the roller coaster. So I read that thing, the whole thing. When he, I never thought, to me it was nothing. I couldn't believe. That was just a combination of circumstances. WEI made a big deal out of it and everything. I mean, that just spun out of control so quickly. But you know, after a while, I, you, you realize every time one of these ha happened, in the end, he's the winner. He's the winner. So the question really is, do we want to encourage or discourage this behavior? Obviously, uh, it seems to me we don't want people doing this sort of thing with children. So. With everybody paying attention to this case then, the question becomes, will the prosecutor uh, take it on and uh, pursue charges? Not that this guy should be locked up for the rest of his life, but if we mean it when we enact laws that say we don't want children's genitalia to be exploited, especially for monetary gain, then here's a statute on the books that says this man can and should be prosecuted. Why wouldn't an elected district attorney take this case on just to make it clear to anybody else who's thinking of doing this don't you dare don't you dare we care about children in massachusetts we don't want people profiting off the exploitation of their genitals any and all exploitation of children uh, is harmful and make no mistake about it if you're asking the public to look at the photograph and to have a certain feeling or reaction to the size of a little boy's penis you are sexualizing the child, period, end of discussion. If that was my kid and somebody called my kid the howitzer and he had a howitzer, that'd be a nice compliment because of the size of what the kid had, but to post a picture, 
That was probably the worst thing Dave ever did. And I bet you Dave regrets it. Even though, even though Dave said all publicity is good publicity, I bet if Dave could take one thing back, it would probably be that one. We'll find out. We're doing a whole documentary on that. That's a good <laughs> I have no comment on that. <laughs> I do know Tom was very upset. Yeah. I know, I know Tom was very upset, yeah. Would you care? If your kid has a giant dick, you're praying to that thing around, like, look at my fucking infant kid, huge dick. Like, I don't know why everyone else cares. I stand by that post. That post is a joke. People were like, oh, he's sexualizing like a little kid. No, you're a perfect it was a, It was an infant. The kid was like a week old. Just happened to have a fucking piece. about this guy Dave Portnoy real quick, quick yeah. what's going in. So here's some very brief notes on him. Here is the picture that caused all the controversy. It's very weird. So you got the gist it's of so it. So weird. He found it on the internet, he posted it, he said look at the enormous cock on Brady's <laughs> kid. Everything Brady does is great. Right. Kids cock being a mind it pisses me right. off. News picked up on horrible. it, accused him of being a pedophile. State troopers came to his house and said look take the picture down so there's no trouble. He took it down, but he still doesn't see why. He didn't take the picture down until the state troopers told him to take it down. Right. I would never post a picture of a child and comment on their genitals, and I'm known for outrageous commentary and all that kind of thing, but I do draw the line somewhere. Uh, hi, Howard. Uh, yeah. I just want to say, Dave, you're <laughs> fucking disgusting. All right, well, if you put him up, you're a fucking piece of shit. How do you like that? What would you do? Well, you your entitled kid? to your opinion. What would you do? What would you do with your kid? People put comments about your kid. You retard. You have because no fucking back. It would not work if it was my kid. It, it's an irrelevant kid, argument. I like to smack in your fucking head. Brady's kid. It, two years old is bigger than I am, <laughs> which is really fucking depressing. Don't... I, I don't understand how a two-year-old can be better hung than me. We make observations. So what you thought is what I thought, and the pictures were out there. And but I would never put it. I, you it. post it on your website. Correct. I wouldn't do that. And by the way, Dave, how are you hung? Uh, not as well as Brady's baby. That's Dave Portnoy.